Why do you call it an additional layer? So basically an offer, all an offer does is send an onion message through the, it basically, you know, it, it looks a little bit like an unfinished invoice. It says, here, I'm selling this. Here's where to contact me. And what you do, what your software does is basically take that, uh, send an onion message saying, hey, I would request the invoice for this offer, maybe offering some of the details and you get back the proper invoice. And at that point you pay it, right? So it's kind of a pre-step. First, you contact the node and get the actual invoice, and then you pay the invoice. So one of the problems we have with invoices is that that pre-image that they promise, you know, the whole here, here's the, the hash, and I'll give you the pre-image if you pay, is totally not reusable. You should not be posting invoices on Twitter. You know, ideally, you send them to this one client, and that is their invoice. Um, and that's a huge problem. And there are a few interesting ways around that, but there are other reasons that it's nice to have this second stage. It's nice to have an invoice. Uh, but having this first stage that basically is a request for invoice stage, which we call an offer, means that it's a static QR code, right? You can just be a static offer. It'll generate an infinite number of invoices. Um, so, you know, you can spray it on a wall, you can have a static image on your web page, all those things, and it just works. Um, uh, but also, of course, you know, it gives you all the other cool things that you want from offers, like recurring payments, right? The offer says, hey, this is for once a week. It gives you currency conversion. It says, hey, this is, this is five USD. And then when you get the actual invoice, it'll tell you what that is in Bitcoin, because in practice, this is the way things work. Well, it's usually, you know, if you're a Bitcoin maximalist, it's easy. You just say, hey, this is an invoice for whatever. But for, particularly for recurring payments, people tend to be fixed in a currency other than Bitcoin. And so it's really useful to kind of know that. And the user would approve, okay, cool. You know, I scan an offer for, for once a month at five USD. And it says to me, hey, that's uh, eight Australian dollars plus or minus 10% each month. And I go, yeah, that's fine. And as long as it stays within those bounds, uh, it will continue to pay it every month and kind of request a new invoice and pay it and everything else. You know, the fact that you've got a payer key means that you can do the refund, request for refunds and stuff like that in a much more straightforward and automated way. So there, there's, there's a whole reason why to have a separate layer on top works really well, even though there may be also other enhancements to, to the invoice uh, format itself. Having this offer format is, you know, uh, is incredibly useful. And so that's already spec'd and implemented. I'm waiting for a second implementation, which will basically mean that we can move forward. Um, the other reason to have a second implementation is that, you know, somebody heals, will, you know, it's good to have somebody poke through the deep details, like when you're implementing it and go, Hey, why did you go this way instead of that way? Wouldn't it be better if we did this and those kind of ideas. Um, so I'm actually really looking forward to that. Um, and it does lift the, I mean, the ways to send people money at the moment on the light network are, you know, they send you an invoice or you just key send to them. You just throw money into the void. Right. Um, and. I really dislike that model of, of throwing money. It, it's really good for the early days when you, you know, Light Network's a network full of friends, right? And you send people money and it's all good. Um, when you look at it like serious commerce and you start thinking about what commerce looks like when there is no middleman, there is no intermediary, you really want your receipt. You really want your proof of payment. You really want to be able to prove that you did or even did not make some payment. You know, the, the oldest piece of writing that we have in existence is actually a receipt or maybe an invoice. Uh, and there's a reason for that. When there's, you've got a cash system with no intermediaries, you want a record uh, that you've actually paid for something. And Keysend doesn't give you that, right? You throw some money and, you know, it, it vanishes and you go, cool, I'm assuming they decrypted it and they took the money. That's fine. But it's terrible for payment for stuff. Like, you know, if you have a dispute at some point, even whether, you know, it could just be their software is buggy, whatever you're like, I know I sent you the money. Like, I don't have any record of it, right? The ability to prove that is actually really quite nice. Uh, in fact, in the Blockstream store, we've had, had at least one case where the person proved that they actually had pay. It's like, well, if they pay, they should have this information. And indeed, they did. So, you know, I think that's at this stage in the Lightning Network's growth is kind of underrated. And I think we're definitely going to want that in future. The problem with the, the payment hash is that while I can prove that it was paid, I can't prove that I paid. You end up with the, like the Brian problem, you know, I'm Brian, I'm Brian, I'm Brian, right? Once you've revealed the payment or to anyone in the, in the route in between, although um, scribble scripts would fix that. Once you've revealed it, right? Hey, I've got the secret. Then everyone's got the secret. Whereas with a payer key, you can prove, Hey, I can prove that without revealing the key itself, but obviously just using a signature, uh, that I was the one who requested the invoice. And here I can prove that I, that it was paid. Doesn't matter who paid it now. Like I was the one who had the invoice created. 